What is imperialism? Let's start with a definition of empire. Empire can be defined behaviorally. When one state shapes the behavior, directly or indirectly, of other states through various tactics, such as violence, intimidation, dependency, bribery, or even inspiration. Empire can also be seen as the interaction between two political entities, a dominant metropole which exercises sovereignty over a subordinate peripheral power. It is about control of one society over another, obtained by force, collaboration or dependence, whether economic, social, or cultural, sustained by formal or informal means, but not dependent on shared values among these societies. Some say empire cannot be complete without an imperial creed held by a ruling elite, along with a sense of dependency among the ruled. Others have said empire is nothing but outdoor relief or welfare for the upper class. Imperialism can be defined as the domination of a strong state in society over a weaker state in society, or the attempt to do so. Others view imperialism as a reality, denoting the relationship between rulers and ruled, in which the sovereignty of lesser powers is infringed by diplomacy, treaty, or economic pressure. It is the same as empire, the relationship of one hegemonic state to peoples or nations under its control. It can be domination through invasion when one country is invaded by a stronger power and the existing political system is changed or destroyed regardless of whether the transaction is deemed progressive or reactionary by observers. Iraq in 2003 would be a good example of this. A more concise definition is that imperialism is a policy of empire building. Are there limits to imperialism? The only limit on imperial expansion is diminishing returns on investment required to keep up expansion. Equilibrium always a temporary phenomena, is reached when marginal costs of expansion are equal to or greater than the marginal benefits of expansion. One benefit is collaboration, and when imperial allies or peripheral groups leave, it is because they think their own benefits will be greater without belonging to the imperial core. This desertion is called suboptimization, the fundamental problem of empires. In modern times, an example of suboptimization is economic nationalism. Already, we hit the idea of core and periphery. But scholars disagree whether the relationship is the product of structure or human agency, matter or spirit. Imperialism can be seen in economic or cultural terms, especially in terms of domination. The European empires in North America, established after 1492, had been created under an ideology born in Roman times, and successor states, such as the USA, could not escape the terms of their creation. Ancient Rome inspired the earliest models of imperial theory in England, Spain, and France. Under the Roman Republic, imperium was vested in the hands of the Senate. Imperium simply meant empire, sovereignty, and the unity of the state. But after the seizure of power under Augustus, imperium was invested in the emperor and acquired theocratic stature, which only increased among the Christian emperors at a much later time. Under the Roman imperium, there arose a legal conceit known as princeps legibus solatus, the unfettered magistracy, or princely will as law. The Roman imperator became the source of law, not through official legislation, but through his influence and will. That which pleases the prince has the force of law. By the second century, Rome's Lex Rhodia announced the emperor to be Dominus Totius Orbis, Lord of all the world. Roman precedent assured that the imperium would forever be associated with a strong executive and served as the first layer of imperialism. The second layer of Roman imperialism was civitas, the civilization of the urban community of citizens who practiced virtue or excellence. This was the Roman world, 
and those outside of it were not civilized. But they would be absorbed into the empire nevertheless. A third layer to imperialism was the forced conversion of Roman subjects to Christianity. To be Roman was to be Christian. To be Christian was to be human. Outsiders were Pagani, or heathen, barbarians, less than human. European colonizers, much later, came to follow or at least mimic the concept of Roman Imperium, in which Christian emperors shifted the old dream of civilizing the world to Christianizing all the people. And the British North American Empire embraced this notion, assuming and asserting that the indigenous people donated their ancestral lands to the white man and sought the blessings of true religion, which is Christianity and Western civilization. The successor state of the United States of America carried on with this tradition and its relations with non-white peoples. And although the growth of democracy toned down the Christian mission and displaced it as the prime directive, it was never entirely absent from the U.S. imperium and its relations with other states, as events in 2003 would suggest. Over the decades, many scholars and writers have advanced theories of imperialism in the aftermath of World War I, Heinrich Friedjung thought it was simply the nationalist expansion of a state beyond its own borders with the intent of securing territory and uniting them into an empire. It was ideologically based with the goal of raising the status of the nation to a rank of world power. It was about international prestige. Even before this, the sociologist Max Weber thought imperialism was an extension of national prestige, a highly prized commodity among the ruling elite. Imperial success increased their social prestige by association. Similarly, J. A. Schumpeter thought imperialism was a social reward for aristocrats looking to slake their thirst for martial glory. It was a leftover from feudalism, corrupting capitalism with atavistic impulses for a tiny elite. For the British Empire and the U.S. Empire, elites worried about a loss of national status and prestige, haunted by fears of looking weak to other powers. William Langer and Hannah Arendt thought nationalism was at the root of imperialism, turning into racist and fascist violence. For D.K. Fieldhouse, Imperialism was the result of mass nationalist hysteria in which politicians allowed public opinion to dictate policy. Adolf Hitler fixated on the Kaiser Idee, a revival of Carolingian Empire in the middle of Europe, or the Kaiserreich, based on racial national socialist ideology instead of Christianity. This is your Empire Historian, Frank H. Wallace, Ph.D. Thank you for listening and thinking.